Dice Tower. I'm Camilla Cleghorn. And I'm Joy Evans. Today we're going to be taking a look at Minecraft Portal Dash. Portal Dash. We're going to be dashing to the portal of yes. such and taking out some baddies, cooperating together to try to complete some tasks by the piglins and take out the big boss at the end. And mine some craft. And that's about all I know about Minecraft. That's it. So before we embarrass ourselves, yep. let's see how it plays. Minecraft Portal Dash is brought to you by Ravensburger Games, designed by Ulrich Bloom, one to four players, and the box says ages 10 plus. Now this is going to be a fully cooperative adventure where the players are ultimately trying to take out the end baddie. In this introductory scenario here, it's going to be Wildfire. In order to do that, they have to access this last tile in which Wildfire will spawn on and then they can attack him. In order to do that and have access to that though, they have to go through three different piglin tasks. And we'll get to that in a minute. So let's go through here an example first turn. The first thing the player is going to do is roll these two dice and they will resolve them in color and then number order. The first thing they're going to do is remove a block from the piglin block over here of the rolled color. Here, for example, it's red. So he would need to take off one of the red available blocks over here in order to be available. It has to have the top exposed as well as two additional sides. So in this example, only this one would be available. It would be removed and returned to the box. The next thing you're going to do is resolve the number. And for that, you're going to look at the standees for the different mobs here. Uh, on the standees, they're each going to have a die number or number of pips in their upper right hand corner. And all of the mobs with that rolled number will activate. For example, here, we will activate this one as it shows up here with the pips. So the first thing we do is follow the movement, which is going to be two. They cannot um, move on to each other's spots and they'll stop once they come to one of the heroes here. Uh, but other than that, they have, they can go, they ignore obstacles on the board other than the inaccessible uh, lava task. So here he would move two, one, two, and then he's going to do his attack value, which on this case is two hearts. So our blue player here would be attacked and he would remove one heart and one additional heart. Now, had there not been any of the, of the correct pips out there of the rolled dice, then you would need to spawn one from our spawning queue up here. You would just take the first in line and spawn it onto that spot available. If there is no available spot, then you got lucky. But in this case, we were able to activate one, so we'll just leave it as it is. After that, the player is going to take these dice and add them to their player board to represent the two actions they get to take each turn. You have three basic actions that you can do. You can take a block from the piglin block over here. You can complete one movement or you can refresh one used item or repair one used item. Same thing as we said before, when you remove the block, it has to have a top exposed plus two sides. And when you take a block with this action, you can use it for one of two things, either to complete a piglin task or for a special ability. If you complete a piglin task with it or contribute towards a piglin task, you would take the block and add it to any of the available ones. These do have to be completed in order though. A has to be done before B and B before C. C before you can have access to this last tile. But you can put order or put blocks on it and contribute to them in any way you want. In order to complete the task, you have to have all the blocks filled or all the spaces filled with blocks from the, the main core over here. And each column has to be the same color. When you remove the block, the other thing you can do is use it for its special ability, in which case it wouldn't get, contribute towards the piglin task. It would go back to the box. And these range um, anywhere from recovering all your health, repairing all your items, getting additional items, upgrading your items, things like that. The other thing you can do is move one. In the, and again, you have to move orthogonally. Obstacles block you. Some of them have discount of health. So you lose health just by going on them. Different things like that. Or you can refresh one used item. As you take the, item, as you take the actions, just for visual uh, purposes here and help you keep track, you would move the dice over. So for example, we already removed a, a brown cube here and we'll say we put that towards a piglin task. And for the second one, we would perhaps attack because we are next to this guy. So for combat, when you are combating, you will choose one of your available weapons and you'll pull it down to show you're gonna use it. So he's going to use his sword and we'll roll three dice. So we take the three black dice here for combat, we roll them, and all X's are hits. 
The health of the mobs are in the upper left-hand corner. For example, here it is two, which means we would not defeat this guy. If, however, you would have defeated him, you would remove him and add him to the back of the queue to spawn later. After you've completed your two actions, you will pass the dice to the next player, and it will continue until either you complete all the tasks and have access to the last uh, tile here and then complete the end boss, or you meet a loss condition, which is one player loses all their health, or you don't get the piglin tasks done in time. And those are in order to, A has to be completed before the entire top level is depleted, B before the second, C before the third, and you have to have the boss completed before all of the blocks are gone and depleted. That's generally how the game is going to be played with a couple di little different things that might happen. If you ever am, encounter a, a treasure chest here that is resolved and all players will receive a new item that they can add, you do have a maximum of six items so you can add one more or you can always replace one and upgrade it. There's also going to be special ones in here which are kind of purple which are upgrades to current items you have. If the item is already damaged and you would add that to it, it immediately refreshes as well for your future use. And in order to expose the next available tile, you do have to be next to it and you decide as a group to do that. When you reveal it, you make sure it's aligned correctly. You will spawn into all the spawn points in order here. This was not a great one, was it? As well as fill in any treasure. Uh, spots on it. And then again, the same thing will happen for the last one, as long as you have the three piglin tasks done. If you ever take a black block over here, you have access to these really special items, and you will take one of them and shuffle them into the top five here, giving you access to it possibly as you go through and take the item, um, take the action to get new items to add to your board, which is again a block color. The game also offers additional modes, which are going to be harder bosses, as well as different spawns, and has a lot of different tiles out here in order to provide variability and increased difficulty if you need. So that's, again, basically how you play the game. Not going to be a how to play. Be sure to consult the rulebook for that more specifically, but general overview so you can understand our thoughts here. Speaking of which, let's get right to it. All right, now because this is a family weight game, I would say, right. I want to jump in right there first and talk about the time it takes to play as yep. well as the age range that the box recommends. I agree. Right? So it says 10 plus. I personally found that to be right at. Uh, my son is 10 years old mm -hmm. and he played this and he really enjoyed it. I felt like he was able to grasp all the concepts, even though he still preferred other actions because that's his play style, but the game did allow for that at the same time. Yeah, I think it could go lower, but okay. lower, I think 10 plus, I think that says to pretty much play on their own. To kind of play independent, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, to have full understanding of the game. And that's the thing, if you like playing games with your kids, because our daughter is six, she could play this, but you'd have to help her through the turns. Mm -hmm. So I think that, I think it's good to say 10 plus, because below, you'll have to help them a bit. But right. it's still enjoyable. Yeah, I think at 10 plus, uh, my son would never play this on his own, but he, uh, again, would understand everything that's happening, so he's ma full, making full decisions on his right. own. Right, So, And then it says it plays in 60 minutes. And I did want to kind of touch on that because I think with, again, this is family weight game, but I'm playing specifically in my family situation with a child. Uh -huh. um, 60 minute game sometimes can be long for him and his attention right. span. But I will say in this game, I do think that 60 minutes is reasonable expectation. I think so too. But it doesn't feel like it. No, I think you could almost get it done quicker than that. Mm -hmm. I think it does move quick. It really depends on the scenario and the game you go through. But mm -hmm. yeah, it does seem to keep, and it also keeps moving. Because the turns are so short. Right. You know, uh, and I think that you do a lot on your turn. And I guess mm -hmm. with that, we'll just kind of go into the turn structure yep. here. I think on your turn, there's a lot of little micro steps. You roll the dice, you resolve the dice, and then you take your action. Right. And for a lot of cooperative games, we see opposite of that, right? We see you do your turn, you're powerful, and then the game responds. Yeah. This one's interesting because they go first and then you are kind of in that, that counter position, the that counter attack. Yes. Yes. And I thought that was really interesting because you end with this feeling empowered. Right. And so because the turns are the way they're structured and it is a short action turn, the game moves really well and smoothly so it doesn't feel like a 60 minute game. Right. This is one of the few 60 minute games my son can sit through. 
I agree. So. Yeah. And it does feel, I think that's why it feels shorter, because it keeps moving, because that's the biggest problem with some games. The kids can't sit still. Right. My kid. <laughs> Agreed, mine either. Yeah. Um, and so with that, I think it also leads to interesting turns because there are, it's a good balance of a lot of different things that you can do. Right. You know, I mean, just we'll use the piglin blocks alone. Now, they're not piglin blocks, but you use them right. for the piglin tasks. Um, so the blocks alone, you can use them to fulfill that task or use them for a special action. So the game simultaneously has interesting decisions and different ways to use your turn but not in an overwhelming way at the same time. No, and the turns I think get more interesting as the game progresses because mm. it is there's a build to this game that yeah. when you start, you just almost feel overwhelmed because you can't do much. But the good thing is you build quickly. Yeah. You can start getting those upgrades and things and they kind of, even not knowing the, I don't want to use the word lore with Minecraft. It sounds like the IP. overkill. The, the word, IP, yeah. even that, without knowing it, I'm looking at these like, oh yeah, this is nice. Yeah. And then playing with people that know it, they're like, oh, it's really nice, you know? Right, yeah. And it's fun to kind of build and put that in there. So it does build up to the crescendo at the end where you are a lot more powerful and quicker. Yeah, and you do get there quickly, I think, because there are very few, there's really just one way to upgrade, right? Is getting the right. additional items and, and such. Um, but in getting that, it allows you to upgrade in different ways to where you do end up feeling a little bit unique. Yep. You know, hey, you know what? I'm gonna be the main fighter. I'm gonna get this enchantment for my sword so I'm a great melee fighter and take this chest plate to have a, a couple additional health. Cool, and I'm the fighter. You know, and then you're going to go out and do more of the exploring and this and that. So it does allow you to specialize a little bit. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. So you can kind of go the tank or you're going to run past and get the objectives. And right. yeah, it does Which kind is, of encourage that. And I like that. And I mm -hmm. think that that kind of shows a balance of the game as well that you, that's a viable strategy in this. You don't have to try and do everything. You know, my son who just wants to, he just wants to fight. He really doesn't care win or lose. If he's taken out a, a pile of baddies, he's happy. Right. You know, and so so that's all he's doing. He sees a, a weapon, it, it could cost us the game, but he's getting that weapon. He wants that diamond sword, it's, you know? And yeah. that's okay, because I think that the game allows for that, for you to pick that one strategy, go into it, and still have a chance at fighting it, which shows a really good balance to the game. It does. I do like the whole fact when you use something, you slide it down, and mm -hmm. then you can repair it, slide it up. And I like that. That whole idea is really good. And also the whole little cube of pulling those... Yeah. little cubes out there's something rewarding even not playing the game yeah. it's you really feel that minecraft thing and then the fact they're multi-use you put right. them on the board or you decide to use the ability it comes with that's really there's a lot of simple but interesting decisions in it right i, I absolutely agree um a little negative for me personally mm -hmm. is i think the queue in or in in order to uh spawn the baddies i think that that is a little fiddly to me I like the idea of what it, it's doing because you can see what's coming up and you can maybe prepare a little bit for it. But for me, just constantly having to move them up is just a little bit fiddly. It's exhausting. It yeah. is. It's just kind of like uck because, again, as again playing with with kids specifically, I'm the one having to do that. He's not lining the queue up. He's not moving it up. You know. So right. I, mean, I think that's fiddly. Um, sometimes pulling those down and them having special enchantment tiles on top of them so they're like double stacked i think sometimes that can be a little bit fiddly so there is a, a fiddly nature a little bit mechanism wise but also just again the board wise in general yeah it can be a little bit much for for little hands but again i think that this is not necessarily a kid's game i would put this more in the family game category right. um that's just kind of my own little eh, i wish it wasn't as as fiddly for lack of a better word you know i wish that the the baddies were in a cup for example or a bag and i was just pulling them out i think that would be a different kind of tension that would be fine for me right and you can't get overwhelmed by too many monsters at first running around and especially mm -hmm. early in the game as you haven't built up your strength yet right. so that's and i think the fiddliness is what takes it from a child to a family because you can't see the kids playing this on their own right That's yeah the the, there is a little bit more upkeep than i think right. a kid would do on their own yeah so um with that do you have anything else you want to say before we jump into final no nothing here? the oh. fact that i don't know much about the ip but it was interesting playing with kids like yours and stuff that know the ip so they can tell you oh this monster here's why you have to have a range attack on them yeah they can let this. you know why you're dumb 
Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. For not Which is pretty this. funny because like <laughs> other games, fantasy and stuff, we'll have to explain to them, well, here's what here's what this is. Right. And yeah. now it's their turn to go, well, here's why you can't use a sword That's on not this. a black cube bomb. It's an ore. Yeah, it's... Or is yeah. it or oh, and obsidian? They, oh, see, I still got it wrong. It's obsidian. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, That's, child. <laughs> yeah, so it is... And you know what? That's kind of fun. It gives them a bit of ownership. The fact that they know something and can teach you... You know what? That's that's rewarding. Yeah, it I think is. at one point um, my my son did tell me he's like, oh, all right, I'll show you when we get home. And he did. We got home and he pulled it up on. It's like, see, this is why that you know kind of went into the lore. And so it does have a really good connection to the IP. I agree. And with it that. gives a common bond. If your kid likes Minecraft, it gives you that bond. Something you like board games, they like Minecraft. You know what? All of a sudden, it's going to open conversations. So Absolutely. that right there is good. And also, I'm going back to the cube. That little cube of pulling cubes, I don't know why. I'm like, right. that's so rewarding. Right. It's really good. It is. Yeah, it I is. like that. All right, so where do you see yourself coming in on a number and a final rating here then? All right, final thoughts on this. This one, I'd probably come in a bit lower than I would have if she, if my daughter loves the IP and if my right. family is invested in the IP. Um, this right here, the only thing that keeps it back a little bit is the fact that it is a slow build to get to the point where you're powerful. But that's offset by the fact that the cube is just so fantastic. As Have I mentioned the cube yet? You do like that cube. I you do. are You are all about that cube. I really... <laughs> that's your job and setup. It you just really make the is. cube happily by yourself. I love that cube. <laughs> <sighs> okay, no. <laughs> so, so the cube is great. But then also you do upgrade quickly and you get to pull those in and there's a lot of interesting decisions. So so, you know what? I'm going to come in probably lower than I would if my daughter loved the IP more, but still I think high enough because this I give it a 7.5. Okay. Yeah, because I do enjoy this game. This is, and you know what? She is six now, so I see her as getting older and into Minecraft more. I see this as something that we can start playing together. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It is hard enough where you have to put some thought into the decisions, which I think a lot more family weight games need. I think so. I, I really agree with all of that. I'm coming in a high on that, I'm going to come in at an 8.5. I think okay, this is wow. an excellent game. And I think because it does a good job, two, two different reasons. I think it bridges the gap between those like me who do not give two hoots about this IP right. and those who love the IP. It's going to bridge that gap. I have listened to my son for literal hours drone on about Minecraft. And I don't care, <laughs> but I'm a mom and I listen to it. And I'm like, oh wow, please tell me more. You know, so I don't care about the IP, but I can see the excitement in it and I can see the good game behind the IP. Right. And to me, that's the sign of an excellent game is that if you like, or an excellent IP game, if you like the IP or not, doesn't matter because the game stands on its own. Right. And I think the game stands on its own because I'm really big into interesting decisions on your turn. Are they simple enough to understand to keep in that family weight, but yet at the same time has kind of this long-term effect. You know, I know that I have all of these broken items I need to repair. Am I going to just repair one? That way I had this another action to do here and I can fight this turn? Um, or am I going to take a block and repair all of them, setting me up for that long turn? That's taking away from the piglin task. Mm -hmm. And so you're having to balance these and it really leads to these interesting decisions that I think is absolutely key in these games for engagement, for variability um, within an IP that you may or may not like. So, and, so I'm sorry? No, and again, the fact that they can teach you about the IP if they love it. Absolutely. That, that conversation is just gold when you're when you're a family. Absolutely. And like I said, you know, I mean, we'll go home. I said, oh, let me show you like in the actual video right. game how this works, what, you know, what it means. And so I, I really think that it has really good, interesting decisions. Yep. It has good tension in it. It's a very rewarding game. Um, the fiddly nature does, like I said, hold it back a little bit, but ultimately that fiddly nature is also, you talk about the block. It's a right. toy factor. It's also fun. You know, I have to do all the fiddly setup, but then my son can sit there and build the block for 10 minutes while I do the board setup. So, so right. it kind of balances itself. So for that, I think it's an excellent game within the IP. It's an excellent game for families. It's an excellent game outside of the IP and all around. Um, it's definitely one that I uh, would not only recommend, but I would strongly encourage. Same here. So, so yep. for me, that's an 8.5 and a seal of excellence. So thanks for joining us here on the Dice Tower. We've been taking a look at Minecraft Portal Dash. Mm. I'm Camilla Clayhorn. And I'm Joy Evans. Take care and be careful dashing to that portal. And crafting mines. Do you craft the mines? I don't know. I need to play the game.